What is up lads? I just wanted to make a quick uh, YouTube sort of video update. Uh, so a bit of a random one where I'm just going to be ranting about things including the new update here uh, to EU4. I did want to say before we get started, however, that uh, we have broken 20,000 subscribers actually for a few days now uh, on my channel here. Guys, I am so appreciative of that. It's amazing. Uh, it took so long. It took like 18 months or more to uh, grind up to 10k and it took about half that time or less to grind up to 20k so what can I say I'm just optimistic that things will continue in that manner like kind of um, snowballing growth but I definitely intend to put the work in uh, another thing I wanted to say is about the series here guys I um, do intend to finish it off and I actually intended to finish it off well uh, better than it's going to be unfortunately this is on an outdated patch now, but I do have the vast majority of everything recorded and so on. Uh, I think it mostly stands up to the new update, which is good. Um, and as to the reason that it's been massively delayed, uh, quite frankly, uh, I don't want to explain why, um, because it's going to come across really pathetic and like I'm uh, begging for support. Uh, that's the reality. So I'm just going to leave it at that. If you guys really want to know why, I'll leave a comment uh, or something like that on this video but uh, that's about it um, I did want to talk about the my plans now that the new patch has come out uh, I did not get an early version of the patch or anything like that like some people do and um, so I have been playing a little bit just real casually trying to learn some of the mechanics and uh, that's what I'm going to be talking about for the rest of the video is basically the new update and how it affects my my intended gameplay and therefore uh, what I intend to do next here on my channel but I do also intend to work on some guides and things like that at the same time hopefully I can get them out and uh, complete them this time around so with that being said guys the new update the major thing that has uh, left me with a sour taste in my mouth is the fact that you can only convert provinces to your religion when you have stated them up uh, so in other words, any territory that you take that is not your state, you cannot convert. Now, I'm going to basically be ranting about this for a little while, just to warn you guys. Um, a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say a lot, because I know some individuals that don't like it either, but I've been hanging around at some of the Twitch chat, Twitch chat of some of the uh, EU4 guys, asking them about their thoughts on this, and many of them are kind of shrugging it off. Um, I'm going to explain to you exactly why I dislike this and there's a couple reasons uh, one is obvious for those who don't, can't comprehend this change it's going to make something like one faith uh, so much more difficult because you can for example convert provinces of your subjects so there are some workarounds without a doubt and I would say one faith is definitely still plausible uh, however it means of your own provinces that you control, you need to literally pay, you need to core them up and state them and then core them up again to be able to convert them. Um, now, as far as subjects are concerned, they can only be so big before suffering liberty design so on, that's obvious. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, gross things about this, in my opinion. For example, um, trading company regions. Now, trading company regions have to be stated up effectively to be converted uh, unless you plan to not have trading company regions. Uh, but this is really crazy. I mean, the idea of, for example, uh, one faith and one tag, I mean, wow. Wow. It means you have to integrate every single one of your subjects before the end of the game and you're going to be heavily subject focused to get that one tag, that one faith. And then integrate them to get one tag. Um, basically, the game, in order for these to complete these large, ambitious goals, has become dramatically more difficult because of this. Now, that is something that uh, let's say that it was just always in the game, uh, and we were used to it. Then you would, respectively. Um, have appropriate goals which were actually more realistically achievable but I did want to say like uh, my actual goal <laughs> what I was working on I spent time actually 
trying to get really good at the Japanese opening, the little uh, concept of feudal Japan. And my goal was actually to one culture the world as Japan, um, which I would say without a doubt, I'm just completely not capable of this patch due to that change because I would have to effectively one faith the entire world owning it directly or at least the vast majority of key provinces directly and then convert them to my religion which again means that I would have to have stated up the vast majority of all provinces in the entire game or integrated them via diplomacy and nothing in between uh, no real workaround that I can find. Definitely give me your thoughts below if there are workarounds or something like that. Um, if it's not that black and white. Uh, but I would have to do that early enough to have also um, enough points and time remaining to culture convert. So, yeah, I'm going to probably say what I do intend to do at the end of the video, my plans. But I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on that as well. Now, the thing is, guys, if we think about the state system, uh, the states are relatively new as opposed to a lot of the other changes. And I'm going to talk about not just the difficulty, because like I said, those ambitious things have become more difficult, those ambitious goals. But for me, I'm just going to be honest, guys. Uh, it's just stupid. It's just stupid. Now, that might be harsh. It's just my subjective opinion. But I believe it is just stupid. If you think about the vast majority of the mechanics in EU4, they do kind of resemble reality in some way. Like, I have an army. And you're like, oh, yeah, people had armies. I kill enemy. Very straightforward stuff. Most things resemble something that makes sense. Um, right now, it's been this way for a long time, I might add, but it's just getting ridiculous now. You are heavily incentivized to state up trash territory that you have just taken. Um, like, what exactly is a state? I mean, you know, when I think of states, I think about the United States. Um, I think there are states in China. Uh, there are states in Germany. Um, but what you will find is the states in Germany are composed of many, many states in EU4. Um, when I think of a state, regardless of size, I think of like the core, the homeland. Um, well, like I just said, you are heavily incentivized to not state up your territory. Uh, that is how it has been until recently. Uh, a lot of people comment in my videos, they've noticed that I don't use my states. And I'm going to explain exactly why that is. Quite simply, you need to core them up twice. Uh, so there is a point where you'll notice that I only state up territory via diplomacy. And in fact, in the last series that I played through, I had states remaining when I ended the game. Some people might think that's inefficient, but you get to a point where you don't need to state things up anymore. And you might say, why don't I state them up via the ones that I've integrated via diplomacy? Um, it's kind of just on principle. The way that I've played the game is once I get to a certain point, if I'm stronger than my neighbors, if I think the next optimized move is to go in and kill the Ottomans, if I think, can I achieve that? Yes, I can. I don't bother stating anything else up unless I've integrated it via diplomacy. And even then, when it's the end of the game, I don't care. And the reason why is because the most truly optimistic, uh, optimal rather, way to play the game is to only have your capital region stated up, the one territory. So as you get so powerful, you remove all of the states and then you state up new territory based on culture groups. So you basically take some of southern China, you state that up, you flip to Chinese culture, and then you conquer all of China now that you're Chinese culture. Uh, so, And then you do the same to the French region and the Russian region and so on and so forth. This is by far the most optimized way to play the game. Now, I personally have mentioned this before, and I don't personally like it very much because it's not enjoyable and it's just silly. It's just silly. When you play a game and you're switching culture, when you're micromanaging it that in that kind of ridiculous uh, schizophrenic way, it doesn't 
resemble why I got into E4, which is like humble beginnings. I don't mind doing things that are logical or even flipping, you know, you could play Riga into Kurland into Prussia into Germany, something like that. Something that makes somewhat sense is fine. Um, but that's just stupid. And um, I've mentioned it before. That's why I usually don't do that. And I actually intended to reserve that kind of playstyle for Ryuku because I don't feel that passionate about Ryuku and the Three Mountains, their culture group or anything like that. And uh, it's so difficult that I would actually have to pull out all of the stops. But for the most part, I don't engage in that kind of gameplay because it ruins the theme for the same reason I didn't form France as the Knights. It, I just... It's not my preference. There was no real reason not to do it. Um, but we're like we're now being even more incentivized to play in that way. Our hand has basically been forced. If you take new territory, i.e., let's say you own all of Europe, well, that's all of Christianity for the most part. So if you now take provinces in Asia and Africa, well. You already don't have enough states to state up Europe. You probably have about a third or a fourth of Europe stated. Well, you better have some states reserved to change the culture of the, or excuse me, the religion of the new provinces that you take. And you cannot even change the culture of provinces that are not your religion, i.e. trading company regions, Right? You now have to state up trading company regions to... There used to be a discount in trading company regions because they were overseas. Now you can't... Oh, you have to call them up in order to change the religion, in order to culture convert. It's not even possible otherwise. Very awkward state of affairs. And uh, speaking of trading company regions, states have now also become so much more valuable your states, in my opinion, regardless of where you're trying to get a one faith or, or not. And people are always going to be fighting over trading company regions. Trading company regions were already strong, and it's kind of ridiculous when you're playing in Asia and you can't have trading company regions in Asia. But now it is just absolutely ridiculous. And just to stress why, for those of you who don't know, um, because the trade game is the most valuable game, essentially, and the trading company regions specifically are extremely valuable, but they're not, they're not states. You don't need to state them. So for this also synergizes with what I just said. You, if you don't want to state territory up, you want trading company regions. Um, so this means that, like, for example, in multiplayer, if you had multiple Asian players, you would be a fool not to be rushing out to Oceania or somewhere where you can change your capital to Oceania so that you can just tr you can just turn all of your land into trading companies like in India for example why why play the new indian features and be an indian nation when you can go colonize papua new guinea put your capital there turn all your land into trading company regions and then turn everything in kashmir north state that up Right? Why state up India when you can do that? Like I just said, it, you will be in such a better position if you have all of your states outside of India and all of India in trading company regions. Trading companies, excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with that change. Like, what is a state? A state? How, does, how do they define a state? It is like this silly feature that is in EU4, and it doesn't resemble anything tangible and then it has now become so uh prevalent and in, of such high import it's it's just the importance is just through the roof now the relevance of this obscure state it's not like an estate it's not like uh various like uh, guilds or or anything right it's just a nebulous term which is now uh, it's taking over you for it's crazy i mean i didn't even speculate upon um i i have been playing hungry briefly guys and your religious unity is whack uh non-stated territory still contributes to religious disunity as far as i can tell so it's very much pushing players toward towards playing tall 
you know, becoming an empire and valuing the land that you can state up and maybe having uh, subjects and not much beyond that, uh, it, it begin, begins to be pretty difficult as you sort of would double and triple up uh, beyond that, without a doubt. Um, they basically buffed humanism ideas, in my opinion, due to the religious unity. And humanism was already a very strong idea, in my opinion. But uh, anyway, so yeah, not too happy about that, guys. But uh, cheer me up with the comments. Tell me where I'm wrong, how dumb I am. I, I would really appreciate it. And lastly, my yeah, J Japan One Culture concept, uh, uh, ambition to achieve that is thrown completely out of the window. It's not going to happen. So uh, in reference to the new changes and playing tall... I had what I thought maybe is a cool idea because it would give me the opportunity to play dramatically differently on my uh, most of my content on my channel where I am trying to conquer the world or something. And at the moment, I'm spitballing ideas, but I was thinking about maybe something that could be termed uh, dismantle the world, for example. So it's inspired by dismantling the empire. And I thought it would be a challenge that I could do where I, I would play as a nation and I could only have uh, stated territory or alternatively, because you have to take land that's not stated. I could only take territory that I have a state available for, um, with the exception of maybe one month. So maybe I can take land and then release it as a subject, for example. But I could only conquer land where I have the states available and the goal, I could have subjects, maybe. I mean, I'll think about that. But yes, I'll have subjects. So the goal would be to dismantle the world. So I would have to own every capital in the world simultaneously. And just to clarify for those of you who aren't following. So, for example, if I did France, I could only expand beyond France to the same degree as I have states. Uh, I wouldn't play France because they're too strong. It wouldn't be fun for me. But then I could also expand subjects like maybe in the early end vassals or client states uh, to increase my power and eliminate nations. But, you know, liberty desires are concerned. And the ultimate ambition would be from there, you know, at most I dominate all of Europe, right? Uh, would be to declare war. I'd wait for imperialism CB declare war on every single nation in the world and occupy their capital simultaneously. That's what I'm thinking about right now. It would be really fun and interesting because it would really promote me to play tall, to build up my country, uh, to be as strong and as powerful as I possibly could be so that I'm able to pull something like that off. And obviously I can imagine, you know, we're having call for peace and where we're spamming, wasting our diplo points like crazy and so on. As we tried, that's what I'm thinking about right now. Give me your ideas. Is it a cool idea and concept, guys? Uh, I'd need I'd need to have strong navy, strong everything. Um, that's what I'm thinking about right now, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, yeah, thanks for 20k subs. It's not going to stop me from making strategies and so on. As long as you guys like EU4, that's good. <laughs> good for me. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.